Hi, my name is Michael Ray and I'm a professional food photographer. This video is part of my website, foodportfolio.com, where I share tips and tricks on professional food photography. In this video, I'll explain how to light a hoagie. The shot I use as an example is one I did recently for a grocery store chain, and it's not a very exciting food photo. But if you're trying to learn more about food photography lighting, it's almost perfect. I think it's very informative. The simplicity of the shot helps me explain exactly what's happening. I'm always looking for good blog content, so I thought I'd show the sequence in my blog and write about it. Then, as I was looking at the images, I found it very difficult to get them in the right order. Some of the differences between the shots was very subtle, and it occurred to me that putting them side by side or one above each other really didn't work. Then I thought of fading between the images better showed the changes, so that's why we came up with this video. Okay, so this is where we started. I placed the first light over to the left and up pretty high. The reason I did that is I was trying to catch the shape of the hoagie. Um, whenever you place a main light, that's the most important thing you could do is you're trying to establish the shape of your subject. Now, if this hoagie was facing the other way, then I would have put the light on the other side. The idea is to show the shape. And since this hoagie is a cylinder, I needed to place it up relatively high but since there was a cut side to this hoagie, I needed to scrape light down that side. So that sort of dictated where I put that light. And as you can see, it's relatively high and it's at about 11 o'clock. So that's why I placed the main light where it is. As you can see, I like to light one light at a time. That way you can see exactly what that's doing. This is gonna take some skill. It's, it's something you have to develop. Um, you have to realize that, okay, this looks really bad. And if your client's looking at the shot, they're gonna think the same thing. This doesn't look very good at all. But it's a building process. So that's one of the things you have to realize that it goes step by step. And the main light is about at 11 o'clock. It's creating the shape of the cylinder and it's scraping light. And that's the main purpose. If I had to do this over, I might raise up that light just a wee little bit, get it to wrap around the front of the bun just a wee little bit more. But um, it worked out pretty well light number one, uh, my 10 inch Fresnel spotlight. You can read more about that in other blog posts, but um, this is a nice light because it gives you a lot of nice texture. It's very crisp. You can see the shadows on the, on the background. So this is an outline shot. So those shadows, it really doesn't matter how objectionable they are because they're all gonna be cut out. Uh, normally, if this was a set, you know, you had an environment to worry about, you wouldn't, have, you wouldn't want something really objectionable. You'd have to figure out how to minimize the objection to all that. Okay, I added a second light over to the right, and that's probably at two o'clock, and it's a medium-sized box, and the whole idea of that is just to put a little edge on it. Um, you know what, normally I wouldn't add that light till later on in the process, but I had it there and I was walking by it, so I just flicked it on. Um, but the whole idea is you just wanna add a little edge light to it, so it's kinda like gives it some life on the corners. That uh, box also is not up really high. It's down relatively low because I wanted the highlights to come around the side of the meat. And the higher I got, the more objectionable that little highlight on the bun on the right-hand side is. But it isn't very bad, and it's probably not strong. I don't think I made it a little brighter, but that's, that was light number two. Okay, light number three was a very large box over top of the set. It was above, directly above and slightly behind a hoagie. And what this does is it helps to write, help, helps to wrap the light around the front of the hoagie. As you can see, the front of the hoagie is still dark and I'm just trying to establish the shape of the thing. So I'm turning that light on. And the reason it's very big is I didn't want any harsh highlights. I just, you know, sometimes those buns can be very reflective. And if you have too small of a light source, it tends to get really, really kind of glary. So that's what I did as I turned on that light and it's working out pretty well giving a shape to the bun. As you'll notice, the front of that hoagie is not lit at all and that's where we're going next. I wanted to add one more thing there. Um, it's sort of a new thing for me and it's, I should have learned about this a lot sooner, but um, it's, it's a concept that I call um, lighting in layers. I mean, I have a light coming from above and behind the main light and it gives you a little bit of that shape but to get around to the front of that hoagie, you just need a little bit more shape. So you, you, light, you put the main light where you think it'll do the most good, and then you sort of add another light somewhere 
on this side of it to help wrap that around. And it's, it's working out pretty well, and I do that in a couple ways here, so I'll let you know. Okay, I'm adding light number four here, and a lot of people would think this is really the main light, but it's sort of the light just to light up the front of the hoagie. And you can see the bun's looking pretty good. The light is at about five o'clock from camera axis, and it's slightly above so that any shadows that it casts are downward. That really helps, and that's an important concept when you're shooting hoagies. You kind of have to uh, get used to that because you can see a very slight cast shadow from the bun onto the cheese. And without that, y your subconscious thinks it's kind of weird, so you kind of have to do that. This is more than just a fill light. This is kind of a main light, and it's another, it's another example of lighting in layers. So I, can sort of, I sort of consider this the second main light. Okay, so that was actually the last light I added, but the meat is looking a little drab. And since I used my Fresnel spot, I'm able to use mirrors to kick light back into just very small areas. Uh, so that's what I did, is I added a mirror. I call this mirror number one, and it's about, it comes from about four o'clock on the scale on the clock if the camera's at six o'clock, and that helps gives you detail. You want to light from above camera axis. It's very similar to the, the secondary light, light number four. So that'll help give you some brightness to the meat, because normally the meat's going to need a little bit of help. It needs a little bit more life. So instead of trying to do that in post, you do it in lighting with mirrors. Okay, so that's what I did, and the hoagie's really starting to take shape. Everything's looking pretty good, but I wanted to add another mirror to give me a little more sparkle in there. This gives you some more highlights and gives you a little bit of edge on some of the lights. So I put another mirror on over farther around to the right and it's not all that important how high this goes. So it's probably a little bit below camera axis and the whole idea is there's another light zapping across the meat and ingredients and it puts highlights on things and it kind of skims and it gives some shape to those objects if it gives some side-to-side -side shape because you didn't get a whole lot of side-to-side -side shape because the main light is coming from behind. So this really helps. This really gives it some life. One of the, I'm just about done. I kind of like this, but there's a little something that's bugging me a little bit. If you'll notice the onion on the far left of the shot, it's just a little wee bit dead in there. So that's one of the things you always kind of have to keep an eye out for is like you think you're done and you just want to go back one more time and take a look and there's see if there's anything you can help a little bit. So what I did here was I added another mirror and that's from the left of the camera probably around seven o'clock. Um, it doesn't have to do any scraping or anything you're just trying to get some fill in there. So what I did was I just zapped another little mirror right in that spot and I think it made it a lot better. Okay that pretty much does it. Does it. Um, the only thing you might want to consider is adding a little fill. I don't think I actually had to turn the fill on in this, but I have a large box behind the camera that if I need to sort of fill in those nooks and crannies, um, I'll just crank it up till I'm happy with it. You got to be careful with the fill though, because all that scraping and shaping you're doing with the other lights and mirrors, if you add too much fill, it can take that away. But if you don't add enough fill, then it looks a little bit too moody. So um, if you need fill, at it, but it's, it's one of those hard things to, to learn what looks good and what doesn't look good. You almost have to walk away and then come back and take a look at it. On this particular shot, I think we're doing okay even without it. Okay, well that does it. That's how I lit the hoagie. There's no right and wrong ways to do food photography. It's all just an experiment and everybody's going to do it their own way. It's just so subjective. There's no right or wrong. So you just got to play with it and do the best you can and work with the equipment you have. I realize that you guys probably don't have all the equipment I have. You don't have all the mirrors. You don't have the light, the same light I have. It's going to be different. But I thought this video would be helpful in that you could see the process. You could see what I did, and you can apply that to your equipment. So that's what I hope you got out of it. There are some takeaway points that I want you to think about. First thing is you place the main light for shape and texture. You have to learn how to see light. You have to see what's going on. That's the hardest thing about food photography is being able to see light. And experience will teach you what's right or wrong. And, and you just want to experiment. Just, just play with it and look at Don't think, oh, man, that looks, like, that looks like crap. Just think, okay, why does it look like crap? Figure out what you did right, what you did wrong, 
and then go from there. Um, lighting is really easy. Learning to see the light is the hard part. So if you want to learn to see the light, you just go and look at a lot of food photography and try to decide what you like, what you don't like. But learning to see is the tough part. Okay, well, thank you very much. If you could do me a favor, come visit my website, join my mail list, leave a comment, ask a question. If you could, share this with some photography friends. And if you could give me a link back, that would be great. Thank you very much.